Happy bank holiday everyone. I bet you're all sitting at home now thinking about Tuesday going back to work. So hopefully this video will give uh, you something to look forward to for the week ahead. Um, this is based on a couple of things I've seen the past couple of weeks on Facebook and the likes with regards to filter setup and the, the myths around it. So I'm going to share with you some experience I have with filter setup, trying to get the best out of water clarity as well as making sure you're getting the nasties out of the water as efficiently as we possibly can. So that's what's coming up in this video. It's not a huge long video, but it's going to be something that hopefully will give you a little bit of an explanation of some of the things out there. I've got a couple of things here um, that I've got spares which I'll talk through. Um, I'll also talk about my filter setup and then finally recap with some things to take away. Okay, so um, yeah, a couple of conversations have started the past week um, around filter setup, around the Fluval 306 I think it was. Um, funny enough, that's what I've got and um, someone wasn't getting the performance out of the filter that they were expecting. Um, now there's a lot of comments on there about overfeeding and um, cleaning out the filter and to be honest, you know, I don't think that was the, the issue at hand. The issue at hand was the performance of the filter wasn't working. So, so ask a quick question, ask the lady um, how she had the filter set up. And more importantly, um, she actually included a photo of the actual front foams, which capture a lot of the debris. Um, and by the looks of things, some of the baskets where the water flows into um, before it returns back to the aquarium that wasn't particularly set up correctly. So what I will do as we talk through this, I'll throw in an image from Fluval, which shows you the actual basket set up. Um, obviously you can tailor some of the baskets, but there are some really essential parts you can't really mess with. So as you can see, the water flows into the filter through the first chambers and hits the first foams. Then as the water actually goes through the first four foams, the water is ready to come back up. The last part of the mechanical filtration at the bottom is the biofoam, which is the black foam sponge. Then you often find filter floss above that, and then the last baskets with the biological filtration before the actual water, which has been filtered, returns to the aquarium. We will talk about more in the following parts of the video. So the water that will flow back in from the aquarium into the filter, the moment it hits the filter, We'll go through the first stage, which is the real dense foams, and there's four packs of those. So the water should penetrate forward through the first wall of foams, and then the water, without much of the debris, should flow through to the second set of foams. This is designed to capture a lot, to, a lot of the detritus, um, any plant matter if you're growing plants, and also any um, food or particles that are still in the water that are quite large. That water then should flow up through the baskets. Now the most important thing in those baskets is the basket at the bottom. The basket at the bottom should not have any ceramic media in so the Fluval Biomax which is one of the, the options out there uh, and we've got some <coughs> other uh, aquarium media I'll talk about in a moment. Um, that should never be in the bottom basket. Fluval specifically states that there is a, an additional foam pad which is quite fine, it's a lot more dense, which will capture anything the first four foams won't. But that's critical to make sure that the mechanical filtration is finished off. Now that's the bottom basket in the 306, same with the 406, 206, 106, it's the same thing, right? It just means that as you go up the grades from the one up to the 406, you have another basket, that's all it is, more baskets added, more amount of media you can add, and so forth. So. Bottom basket is a black foam called Biofoam, and I'll also include a picture of this in the video so you know what, you, what I'm talking about. Also, I'll add some links from uh, Amazon where you can get them all. Obviously, you can get those from your local fish store as well, which we should be supporting. So in the bottom basket, before the second basket comes into play, I highly recommend some of this stuff. Now, this is a polishing pad. This will then add to the last part of the mechanical filtration. 
as you can see and uh, hopefully you might be able to see that a bit closer it's like a foam pad now you'll see it's got quite a bit of bounce to it when this becomes um, wet and gets absorbed with water this will shrink down and, and kind of get to that now you can buy cheap on the market however you know you buy cheap you pay twice now the fluval ones are designed to fit the boxes perfectly they're cut specifically I personally have had a big um, a big pad of the filter foam not the fluval one but like a cheaper brand and I cut to size now I must admit the performance from the fluval ones is by far better than the, the standard off the shelf from cut to measure so that's just a little bit of experience there but this foam is a polishing pad now, some people were putting these polishing pads at the last stage. Well, that's fine, but you still have to be able to capture any detritus and any other media before it hits your biological filtration. So, bottom basket. So, we've gone through the intake, the four walls of the filter with the four main foam pads, the biofoam, which is a black block, and then the finishing pad on top before we get into the next basket. The next basket really should be something like your ceramic discs that are designed to house the biological bacteria. Hopefully you can see that. If not, I think you'll probably all get the gist of things. But again, I'll put the link on Facebook um, via, the tube, via YouTube. So the Biomax is designed to absorb and create as much surface area as possible for the bacteria. Now, I was using this for a long time. To be honest, I'm dwindling my stock down of this and I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. So, I've been using a couple of things. I've been using the Bio Home Media. Now, this stuff has got better surface area and to be honest, if you want a media that has a great surface area. So that's what one of those looks like. Okay. Now Palm Guru does, the, does these, and to be honest, I saw these on Palm Guru um, before I got these as a, a, an item in my aquarium box. Um, I make sure all my filters are using some of this now. And I also use the Seachem product. Um, now, the Seachem product is basically a um, pumice stone, but again, it's surface area. So that's your second basket. You want to fill it with as much media that's going to house as much uh, bacterial uh, and, and denitrifying bacteria as possible because this will be a biological filtration probably the most important for keeping chemical levels balanced and getting those real toxic nasties out of the water and then leaves you with your third basket now in my 306 i again put huge amounts of biomedia in um, again i want my filter to actually have a large area of biological filtration rather than adding a chemical filtration like carbon. Um, I use carbon in the past, um, you can obviously use other different types of chemical filtration that are out there. I personally don't. The only actual, I would say probably the only item I use from chemical filtration is a Seekin Purigen and that is to add the clarity and, and, and kind of polishes the water. It takes out a lot of the tannins. So in my third basket, as it's divided into half, I've got more bio home media, I've got the seed cream equivalent, and then the other one is again a mixture of both, including a pack of seed chem uh, purity. So before the water returns back to the aquarium, it's gone through four foams, two biofoams, two filtering pads, and four baskets of biological filtration. So what I've done, um, I've included this image uh, from Fluval, which uh, if you can see on the left hand side is a typical 306 setup. Um, it shows you the foam pads in basket one. Then over to basket two, the um, biofoam pads. Now just above that, before you get to um, zone three, I put a filter fuss um, pad. Then we go into the ceramic media and then you have the options for the chemical filtration. But as I said, I don't use that apart from the Seachem Purigen. 
but just thought it was a really good image to show you what options you do have. Now, what I will do, I'll um, join on the back of this video a quick update of what my aquarium's looking like today. Um, I did a water change on Friday, so at least you can see what's going on. Um, my CO2 cylinder's on the blink at the minute. Um, the O-ring on the regulator went pop, or more like bang. Um, and stupidly, I haven't got any spares, so they're on the way from Germany, from JBL. I could have gone and got a, a kit from B&Q or something, but to be honest, I'll be spending hours trying to find the same size O-ring, and you know what? Jumped onto eBay, bought it, it's on the way. It'll be here this week, so. Um, yeah, my CO2's not running at the moment, but to be honest, apart from huge amount of growth, that's the only thing I'm missing. So hopefully that's helped you in a little bit of a, an overview of filtration. Um, as some of you may know, looking at my filter, I also have another filter on hand, which is the Fluval G6. Um, now I had this, uh, bought this off a lady on Facebook. Uh, she had it for a few months, couldn't get on with it. I think it's a fantastic addition to my filtration. So I have the 306 running and the G6. And the G6 really is more a convenience filter. It's cartridge based. I've got a mechanical um, filtration, which is kind of fine mesh, which captures a lot of the, de de the debris. The second canister inside it has been filled with crushed coral and a, um, a pack of Seachem Purigen. Um, I have used Seachem Purigen loose, but it gets a bit messy, so I prefer just use by, by the bags. And then the rest of the uh, filter is filled with three um, three trays of um, biological filtration, the Fluval G6 one actually, and so by a home media. So this is a nice cutaway um, image of the Fluval G6. The water comes in from the aquarium, goes to the first stage which is the cartridge, which is a fine mesh filter. The water then passes from there through to the chemical filtration cartridge. Both cartridges can be easily removed, so that's probably one of the biggest benefits to the Fluval G3 and G6 range. Once the water's gone through the chemical filtration cartridge, in my case it's a crushed coral mixed with a Purigen, um, Seekin Purigen um, bag. It goes then through the last three baskets of biological filtration and back into the aquarium, and in my case through a spray bar. So again, just remember, mix it up a little bit, get your filter set up correct, play around with it, uh, try not to change your media too often, because we want to obviously maintain the level of nitrifying bacteria. However, there will be a time where you have to replace your foams, and, and same with your ceramic media and your foams, so just keep an eye on that. But I always judge that based on if it looks like it, it needs changing, I'll just go and buy some more. So. You're the best judge of that. You know your filters, you know your aquariums. Um, hopefully this video has helped. Um, just kind of put something into play with regards to filtration, how it should be set up. I'm, I'm interested to hear your comments. Um, again, there's, I, I, I want to shout out to Pond Guru. He's got some fantastic videos of different filters, filter setups. And if it's a filter that he hasn't set up or pimped the filters he likes to say, get in contact with him throw your filter across to him. I'm sure he's still doing the, he'll pimp out your filter for free. So definitely jump on that um, if you haven't already. But some good videos out there. This is just again, my take on uh, canister filtration. Thanks very much and speak to you soon.